Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us in this webinar. Uh, I'm your presenter, Basma Benzamiya, uh, Biovia Solutions Consultant at LaunchTech. And today we're going to talk about the use of computational methods and simulation in drug design. Uh, but before we can start, please note that this session is being recorded so uh, and it will be sent to you uh, later on if you would like to uh, revisit the recording. As well as during the presentation, if you have any questions uh, that you would like to ask or inquiries, please feel free to uh, include them uh, in the question box uh, in the chat box at your right. Uh, or later on after the webinar, if you have any questions, uh, you can email us uh, at this moment. So starting with uh, a brief outline on the things that we're going to discuss, I'm going to start briefly introducing our launch tech, um, what we do, uh, as well as Biovia brand. Um, I'm also going to talk about the drug development process, its challenges, and the solutions. And then we're going to talk more in detail about Discovery Studio. What does it offer uh, to help uh, in solving the challenges in the drug development process? and its capabilities. Uh, in general, I'm going to talk more about macromolecules design and engineering, small molecules design uh, and library design and data optimization. Uh, small introduction about us, LaunchTech. Uh, we are based here in Abu Dhabi. Uh, we are a DASO Systems partner in the Middle East uh, region. And we are there a development and service partner. Our mission is to help organizations deploy uh, effective infrastructure uh, to help them in their, to maximize their operation. Our services range from uh, mainly software distribution. We provide technical consultancy as well as technical training on the software as well as certifications to ensure that um, the users of the software are uh, using it uh, to the maximum efficiency. Next on uh, the Biovia brand. So as I explained before, uh, we are the systems partner uh, in the Middle East. We distribute many soft, uh, many software portfolios, including Simulia for uh, for structural uh, simulation, fluid simulation, electromagnetic simulation. We also distribute Catia for CAD modeling. However, in this webinar, we're going to focus more in one brand, which is uh, Biovia. Um, it is spe specifically tailored for science-based industries, and, the, and the brand portfolio includes many, uh, many uh, softwares that range from lab management softwares, process production softwares, and quality regulatory. And finally, um, so research uh, softwares which is what we are going to, uh, to mainly talk about today, which is in the uh, field of novel therapeutics and drug design. Uh, Biovia worldwide users are, uh, are huge and still growing. We have 1.4 million uh, wide world users uh, and over 2,000 uh, companies that use Biovia solutions and over 20,000 peer-reviewed references to our products. This, this, all these numbers are increasingly uh, increasing each year because mainly of uh, the mature science that we provide in our solutions with over 25 years of uh, scientific, scientific experience. This is just um, some of the companies that uses uh, Biovia solutions we have the big companies like Pfizer, Amgen, Merck, Sanofi, and many other pharmaceutical and biotechnology uh, companies. Moving on to the drug development. So what to make next? This is an essential question in uh, every pharmaceutical uh, co company through, throughout their pharmaceutical drug design cycle. What to make next and how to design a safe and stable and efficacious uh, therapeutic. Uh, to get to that, uh, to that point, uh, the, the, it is a really long and complex process that could take up to 12 years to get to the commercialization process. Specifically for the research and discovery phase, it could 
uh, be up to six years where um, researchers uh, try to identify, design, study and optimize the lead. And with the advance in sciences um, and understanding uh, scientists where, while trying to understand uh, the diseases and the drugs on, at a molecular level, uh, they are faced with several challenges, um, making their uh, discovery process uh, lengthy and difficult. Um, they are faced with high failure rates sometimes, which leads to high costs in the drug development. So how could this be, um, how could these challenges be uh, solved? Um, in traditional ways, uh, the, uh, pharmaceuticals rely on in vitro synthesis and screening of uh, compounds to identify potential uh, drug uh, candidates. However, because of the technological uh, advances in the past decades, uh, companies are using, are leveraging the computational power and in silico method uh, in the drug discovery phase. And it has proven over and over again to be effective in overcoming the previously mentioned challenges. Scientists and researchers are able to create high quality candidates and optimize them more efficiently uh, while reducing time to market and cost. Uh, I'm just wondering from the attendees, how many of you guys have used a computational method in your uh, drug design or uh, drug research? I'm waiting for your answers. Okay, moving on. Thank you for your answers. Uh, moving on. So, uh, for computational methods and in silico methods, we have a specific solution for uh, biological research, which is Discovery Studio. It helps. Uh, it helps you to analyze the molecular interactions between small molecule um, therapeutics and your protein target, which will eventually help you uh, uh, in developing insights on the, uh, how your drug behaves and uh, identify and, uh, and accelerate uh, finding new candidates in your drug discovery, ultimately lowering the R&D costs and time to market, and of course, the lowering the resources used uh, in your research. Uh, for in drug discovery, we have many tools that span a wide range of topics, uh, macromolecules design and engineering topics, small molecule design uh, topics, and library design and data optimization. And the science scope is uh, very broad, being at the core of it being our simulation and quantum mechanics tools and homology modeling tools and X-ray tools. However, for studying biologics, we have other specialized tools uh, like protein docking tools, studying uh, speci specialized uh, uh, tools to study membrane proteins and antibody design, protein aggregation, and many more. On the other hand, for your small molecule uh, design, we have other mature um, we have other mature products uh, like uh, virtual screening. Uh, QSAR and uh, ADME and toxicity uh, calculation tools that all help you in your small molecule design processing. I'm going to talk more in details about the capabilities and what could be done with Discovery Studio. Starting with the structural target uh, characterization, we have many types of analysis that you can use to study your target. For example, protein and sequence uh, database mining especially with uh, the increase, uh, the extreme increase in biological data that cannot be processed uh, with traditional data analysis techniques. Um, you can use our clustering analysis. You can uh, model, the, you, can mod you can use uh, modeling feasibility assessments. Uh, you can do a pocket identification and analysis as well as autologous mutation analysis. 
specifically uh, for protein targets and because of their non-static nature many challenges uh, researchers face many challenges to understand the protein function and structure changes during binding uh, for that we have many tools starting with our protein preparation tools to manipulate your protein structures for example uh, you can generate a report, a report with all the problems in your protein, uh, protein structure and manually, for example, add missing atoms or missing loops or uh, graph groups from a template in your uh, structure. Or, uh, ultimately, uh, or uh, alternatively, you can automatically uh, repair your protein uh, using Discovery Studio. Then you can go ahead uh, with using our trusted molecular dynamics modelers. Uh, using CHARM and NAMD uh, engines uh, and generate realistic models of your protein motion. To later on analyze the structural properties of your trajectories, uh, such as distance, portion, uh, non bond interaction, uh, then move on uh, to do more uh, advanced analysis using clustering and dendrogram plots. This is a small uh, video of uh, a dynamic simulation about uh, on protein binding to a ligand. As you can see, you can study the trajectories different uh, different. Uh. So moving on to uh, another set of tools that could be used to uh, predict the protein structure from its uh, sequence uh, using homology models. We have many intuitive tools. Um, you can start with uh, easily uh, do similarity search of to, to your uh, sequence. Uh, you can do structure alignment with uh, with our uh, with many other tools, and later build on your homology model and refine your structure. This is a small uh, demonstration where it explains uh, how to do a homology. Uh, homology modeling here you can uh, you can import your sequence and then using a similarity a search sequence by similarity task you can use last search to identify a template uh, you, you can here uh, input your parameters your input your sequence and database The results are, uh, a are in a table of view. Uh, this that is displays the hits, and uh, with um, with a map view, so that is, that, that displays the coverage of the hits uh, in a map with the bit score, uh, and accordingly, the ones with uh, the red and the orange are uh, the highest uh, are the highest hits are the, are the best hits. Then you can load uh, your uh, structure and alignment. It is opened in a sequence and the molecular uh, windows. In here, you can also uh, load the secondary structure of your sequences. Making it easy for the next step which is to align the model uh, sequence with the selected template um, using this uh, align sequence to template task. You can here uh, as well uh, input your parameters. And run your task. Uh, this will result, uh, this will open a molecular win a window with uh, superimposed uh, template structures. And using the previous, uh, and using it, you can uh, create your 3D homology uh, model. Here, as you can see, after creating the homology model, you can see uh, the models the, the, the uh, corresponding to the total energy it is well, as well opened in here in the molecular uh, in the molecular window and you can as well identify using line plots you can identify the areas uh, in the structure with uh, the largest 
with the largest violation uh, of uh, homology restraints and do more analysis with the different chart types in here. Uh, moving on to uh, another important uh, step in drug discovery, which is uh, filtering through small molecules and identifying and studying the binding uh, to the targets. Uh, for this, we have a set of uh, very uh, intuitive tools for virtual screening and docking, uh, starting with uh, ligand preparation, uh, which allows you to prepare uh, allows you to prepare tasks like removing duplicates, uh, listing isomers, generating 3D conformers, um, also an other filtering tools uh, that you could use. And on the other hand, as well, you can um, you can identify character and, uh, and characterize your protein active sites, uh, as in here, uh, they, um, and later on perform uh, virtual screening, uh, like docking and structure-based final force. And then you can also uh, visual, visualize and analyze the non-bond interaction in your complex. This is another uh, quick demo on uh, a docking task. Here I have uh, imported my protein structure. As you can see in here, uh, the red sphere, uh, the red sphere uh, represents the active site in the protein, which was done also uh, by a discovery studio before. Um, you can uh, you can hide all uh, the residues that are not uh, part of uh, the active site and uh, continue with your uh, docking to make it easier for the visualization. Uh, here I am importing a random conformer for my uh, for my ligand, and you can also start uh, the intuitive uh, the GUI of the discovery studio where you have your graphics window, where you have your uh, hierarchy window, where you have your table window with all the information that you need, that you need in your uh, analysis. You can perform your uh, docking. There are many uh, tools. Uh, in here, we, we use C Docker to generate uh, highly accurate uh, docking tools. I have uh, input my receptor, my ligand, other parameters that you need. And let it run. The results gives you a set of uh, poses, uh, and you can also use vision interaction tasks to study the interaction bound of interactions between the poses and the, uh, the active site of the protein. Uh, moving on, uh, and after specifying the ligand and binding sites, uh, it is important to study and perform pharmacophore modeling. Uh, and for that, we have as well many other many models uh, that you can leverage in your uh, work. Uh, we have qualitative uh, common feature pharmacophore model, which generates pharmacophores that are common to a set of active ligands. Uh, we have a quantitative uh, predictive model, which uh, derives the model uh, from a ligand alignment or by how well um, a ligand fits a pharmacophore instead of uh, molecular features. We have fragment-based as, as well as structure-based uh, models as well. And finally, you can use our uh, ligand profiling tools to map the ligand against the generated pharmacophore. Uh, another important aspect in drug discovery is to identify uh, the chemical groups responsible for triggering the specific biological effects. Uh, for that, uh, SAR and QSAR analysis is very important for your lead optimization. And we have two main methods, which is matched uh, molecular pairs and molecular field uh, based 3D QSAR. For the matched molecular pairs, uh, you can use these pairs that differ only by single structural transformation to identify activity cliffs in those. And this, uh, uh, and this method is rapidly gaining popularity lately. 
Uh, in addition to all of that, uh, there are many chemoinformatics tools that, you, that are available for data mining and analysis. Uh, other tools that allows you to calculate admits and solubility properties of your molecule. Uh, you can do a scaffold growing and hop, uh, hopping, uh, and also a tariff selection and optimization. As you can see here, the admittance uh, uh, calculations. Finally, and as explained before, you can perform molecular dynamic. Uh, calculation for your structure, uh, optimization, and find the binding energies, the enthalpy, the entropy, um, using uh, molecular dynamics and uh, FET. And also, uh, you can evaluate the effect of mutation on your binding affinity uh, in your complex. Uh, finally, we have uh, we have protocol design. Uh, which is, uh, we have pipeline pilot, which is uh, not so much into science, uh, which is a scientific tool. However, it is a great tool to automate your processes and, um, and analyze and effectively analyze your data and, um, and capture the best practices and automate it for future, uh, for future uh, better. Um, as I explained before, there are many scientific uh, references for our uh, for uh, our uh, simulation softwares uh, using it, and you can you can browse these scientific references through this uh, link. You can screenshot it in here if you would like to uh, find uh, to um, explore how other users are using our uh, modeling simulation in their research. This brings us to the end of uh, our uh, presentation. Uh, before we can start the Q&A session, please note that this was a brief uh, introduction about uh, the software. As you can see, it is a very wide, um, it has a wide set of tools for every specific, uh, for every specific activity. So if you would like to, uh, to learn more how it could be, uh, how it could be, um, used in your specific research and how it could be optimized for your specific topic, please don't hesitate to contact us at this email.